don't say, oh boy. I'm not sharing any personal experiences I've had with hookers. Sure. Well, if you didn't want to know, why'd you wake me up and call me a hooker? I've got I don't proof. Know. It's, just, it's just not a came nice to me. It's not a nice thing to say, dude. It's not a nice thing to say. Yeah, but it's a fun word to say and call people. I think when people say hooking, referring to like a woman working as a hooker, I think that's funny because it's like that's. That's yeah. not the. That's a it's, reach. It's not a verb. <laughs> oh, you hooking? No. <laughs> That's like something you would ask a fisherman. Like, yeah. Hey, man, you hooking? No, actually. All we're hooking. We, we use nets. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're a hooker. Oh, come on now. See, that's a tough, grizzled, like. New England, dude, he'd probably kick your ass in his, like, giant rubber overalls. The fuck you say to me, bro? What the fuck you say to me? This is my pier. Get off my pier. Get off the pier, you fucking... (laughs) You're the hooker. Go get yourself a hot dog. (laughs) Uh, You know, give me one, too. I don't know how them Yankees talk, but... Something like that. That's one of my favorite... Louis C.K. joke. He's like, let's not pretend that like the Boston accent is an accent. Stop calling it that. Like it's just a group of white trash people all agreeing to pronounce things incorrectly. Well, you know, you get that everywhere. You're not um, fun with jokes anymore, dude. You're like <laughs> liberal. I don't like you, dude. Oh, my bad. We're breaking so, up. What about this hooker? Oh, yeah. Change the subject once I call yeah. you a liberal, huh? You can't handle the heat, then you should have not called me a hooker, dude. I identify as a meat popsicle. A meat popsicle? That's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like licking a frozen sausage. I'll give you 20 bucks if you can guess that movie. I identify as a meat popsicle. Right, well, uh, he says, I am a meat popsicle. I have no idea. Ice Age. It's Ice Age. Nope. <laughs> it's got it. Okay, Ice Age 2. I'll give you another hint. Ice Bruce Age Willis 4, The Great it. Meltdown. Bruce Willis says it. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's got to be Die Hard. No, it's The Kid. Disney's no. the kid. Is nope. it Disney's the kid? All right, you fucking suck, dude. Santa Claus. The what Santa the Claus. <laughs> no, Fifth Element. But nice try. Uh, I've seen that movie a lot. Lilu was yeah. like the first boner I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the part? He's got his hands in the yellow circles, and the cops are like. Uh, I forget what they ask him, but it's like identify yourself or whatever the fuck. And he's like, I am a meat popsicle. (laughs) Dude. Anyways. Okay. I'm assuming you haven't seen that movie since like the nineties. No, I've watched it a lot, um, but it's been, been a while, probably a year or so. Chris Tucker almost ruins that entire movie. Like, He's my favorite part of the whole movie, though. Oh, so you are just a liberal loser. <laughs> you God are, damn it, man. You're not Who a... Who doesn't like it? Everyone on the fucking planet. That was like literally... I used to cry like when the explosion was going off. And he's like, one, two, three. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's literally... Go, go read reviews of the movie from back then or even modern reviews and they're like yeah we could have done without that um no i loved it (laughs) all right so what king is trying to say is that he is now transitioning into a homosexual who likes skin tight leotard leopard print yeah 
blonde, all positions. shaped hair. <laughs> Though I love that microphone, Kane. That shit was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Super green. And I also thought that that blue opera singing alien was like that made my seven-year-old body feel weird and i was like i think i like her yeah but i'm not allowed to like her she's an alien you know i had a weird psychological thing because i remember i was eating eggs one morning watching that movie and the part where they're like ripping the stones out of her her stomach and all that blue it just like fucked me up to where I didn't want to eat eggs anymore. <laughs> you know, like the texture. I Dude, was like, Ugh. <laughs> eggs are the one thing that you don't even need to have a bad memory with. You could love eggs for 30 years and then all of a sudden something happens. It doesn't have to be a bad egg. It doesn't have to be a fucking like rotten or taste thing. Just yeah. something weird like that happens. You're like, I'm not going to eat eggs for like four years now. Yeah. And then one day you're going to like try eggs again. And be like, oh, I kind of like eggs. Like I forgot something weird happened. Yeah, it's a strange food. You almost have to have it with other shit. Like breakfast burritos and egg sandwich, you know. Um, so I didn't eat eggs after I worked at IHOP because just one of those weird memory things where it reminded me so much of poverty that I was like, I can't like, it's too tied to these memories. Wow. Then, then you know, the army and then Korea and then I came back and I was like, dude, I love eggs. Like, what happened? I'm like, oh yeah, it was poor as fuck. Like doing a <laughs> shitload of drugs. Like that makes sense. I don't like living that shit again. Yeah. And for you, and, it was the opera singer with the fucking yeah. one of the five elements. Pretty fucking. It's cool. a texture thing, you know. It's just the texture of the eggs, and goddamn it, if they're wet, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, dude, I am a sunny side up motherfucker, dude. Yeah, I like sunny side up, and but if they're scrambled and you serve them wet, man, go to hell. Go I straight think, to hell. I think that's more of a uh, like liquid egg thing. You know, the shit that comes in milk carton where it's just like pure yellow and you dump it in a pan and like instant scrambled <laughs> eggs. That Ew. shit is the worst. That's <laughs> disgusting. That's what they serve at Taco Bell and shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. You have to ask like McDonald's like, hey, can I have a real egg, please? Like, we don't no. have those, sir. We're, we have wet ass eggs. It's going to soak into your fucking biscuit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So are you gonna tell this hooker story or like we just Oh I'm sorry. I thought we were on. having a fun conversation because you veered off the fucking cliff with I'm a meat popsicle. Yeah, that was a quick I don't little even, trivia. I don't even want to talk to you anymore, dude. You handle the podcast from now on. Oh wait, <laughs> I gave you five minutes to try to do that and you couldn't. Oh uh, coyote's a bitch. Right. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Fuck you. And now I feel awkward and I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> great. Makes for good it's podcasting. Like, <laughs> it's whenever you have like a duet scene and the person walks off stage and you're just center stage with the fucking uh, light beaming you're down in, on you. And you're in like, costume, you've got setting powder on your face you know? and there's that one asshole in the crowd that coughs and it's super quiet and just, ah. look, at, look at this loser <laughs> can they hear me please <laughs> do they know i'm nervous <laughs> yeah i was like getting flashbacks of the joker when he's doing stand-up comedy <laughs> 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 uh, 
my hey. mom told me to go kill myself. <laughs> Just silently. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, hooker story. Hooker story. Rob, now I'm nervous, dude. Uh, all right, so there is a very, and I mean, I'm already going to do it, and I'm not asking your permission, Dad. I'm just saying I'm doing it. I'm going to become a hooker. No, I'm kidding. Am I? Well, you might be successful at it. Yeah, I got a big dick, boy. Let me tell you. Um, all right. You I'm could not just slip gonna... in there. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> Zip. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, no, there is a like 99.999 repeating chance that I am moving to Vietnam, motherfucker. At the Why? end of my lease. At the end of my lease. Not. Not anytime soon. Why Vietnam? My friend, has, she works at the embassy in Seattle. And she's married to my army friend. Right. And, but she's also Vietnamese, right? Oh. Not just some like random hookup, like. Okay. Okay. I'm hey, you want to go to you want to go to Vietnam? Like, no. Okay. I heard it's great. <laughs> it sounds pretty neat. So they have. I already found an apartment, bro. Two hundred and fifty dollars a month for one bedroom, which includes laundry, by a maid, three times a week. Then maid services three times a week. Electricity, Wi-Fi, internet, parking for two hundred and fifty dollars a month. What's it look like? It's nice as fuck. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. And how does that work? You still get the same payments, right? Yeah. Whether you live overseas or whatever. Yeah. So uh, you just transfer it to whatever the fuck Vietnam uses. Dong. And probably double your fucking money. <laughs> big old, big old dong, bro. What's the transfer rate over there? It, it you know? is. For every one dollar, it is. Hold on, I, I, I did the math. One million dong is forty dollars. And well, then you'll be a million dong air. Well, yeah, I'll be almost a billion dong air by the time <laughs> I'm done. But so, like, hookers cost 250k. I don't know if like you need to do, I don't know if you need to do any math. That's ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ten bucks. Wow. Do you know how fucking spoiled I'm about to be, bro? Yeah, ten dollars ain't shit over here. That's a hooker <laughs> a night, dude. I fart ten dollars. Yeah, dude. I was already <laughs> looking at like nice ass, like expensive ass vans that or like Converse. Probably oh, shitty. Yeah. yeah. No, hookers. The Converse hookers. Yeah, I thought you were talking about like a van, like a vehicle. Oh, no. They ride <laughs> motorcycles, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, those like shoes cost probably about 20 bucks, if that. Mm -hmm. And over here, they're fucking 80 to 100 now. It's like, yeah, dude. Eating a meal is going to cost me like 50 cents. True. And you can pretty much live the same lifestyle, but every time you go outside, it's like an adventure. 
<laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it, I wonder how the beaches are over there. Very much like ours, where if you go to like South Padre, you're like, ew, dude, what the fuck? But then you go to, you know, like Santa Monica, and it's like, whoa. I guess now Santa Monica is probably you as well. But, you know, like the Bay Area where you're from. Yeah. It's like, yeah, fuck yeah. They have that as well. It's called uh, Ho, Ho Min Bay or something like that. Ho Lin Bay. Ooh. And okay. it's like, because it's very different. So, because it's a communist country. And when you think communism, you think a fucking like 18 year old shaved head, purple haired bitch. I'm like, I want communism. I'm a socialist. But over there, communism is like the opposite. It's extremely conservative. And up north is like more conservative, but literally not like how it is here, but conservative in the sense like I, I dress oh, wow. more conservatively. Um, I act and behave more conservatively because there's a fucking communist regime. And in the South, it's more westernized where, you know, it's all about fashion and like, you know, having fun and party life. Right. And so I'm like, yeah, I already found a fucking place in the party life what's the Sorry. city you're looking at ho chi minh ho chi minh oh, city which sick. is if you don't know that's saigon uh, yeah no let's see it on the map yeah i recognize the name but yeah down there off the coast over there they got those limestone mountains coming out of the fucking ocean it's like oh yeah fuck. it looks like uh avatar or some shit <laughs> yeah or where uh they found luke in the new trilogy oh fuck off hey dude they took some chances where that he was sucking on the alien tit yeah, yeah good job disney fucking oh dude don't get me started on those <laughs> oh, i'm so mad at disney I'm in my 30s and I'm mad at a fucking children's company. Oh, man. Uh, it's almost as if yeah. the children are different. They got a fucking hotel in this badass bay for 30 bucks a night. <laughs> <laughs> and that's luxury, bro. Yeah, it looks super nice. Wow. Yeah, man. So that's going to be my decision. Oh, shit. Already made it. <laughs> are they going with you or is she just helping you getting out there no she's just helping me get my visa yeah interesting yeah dude i am fucking stuck right yeah america's expensive man it's expensive to be here well it's just so weird like i I'm struggling to fucking feed myself. And then I can just move to another place and with the exact same amount of money. And we're like, yep. oh, you're a king, bro. I'm like, what? I'm like, yeah, you you got you can have everything you want and more. Well, yeah, what? Yeah, dude. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'll do it. Yeah. I already you're gonna have to it. learn that that language. It's all in the back of the throat. Down there, man. <laughs> I got something else that'll be in the back of their throats. Oh, Ooh, shit. Oh, dude, I'm talking about my penis. Hell yeah, boy. Me love you long time. All right, you want to know? <laughs> for everyone, like, I'm going to explain this to people that don't understand what that means. What do you think me love you long time means? Like, surface level uh, like, what do you think that forward she's she's out there 
hooking. Obviously, and she'll do it for a long time. Right, a long time means overnight for hookers. Oh, it, it, fun, right? Yeah, that makes sense. That's a you because there's two options. You can get one for the hour, or long time, which is overnight. I'll I'll spend the rest of the night with you and leave in the morning. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, fun little tidbit. <laughs> and guess what? That's the Saigon hooker. And guess where I'm going? I'm going to Saigon for hookers. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's Dude, I'm so movie. excited. <laughs> I think that's a, was that Apocalypto or Full Metal Jacket? Did you really fucking say Apocalypto? I don't or remember another. that scene in Apocalypto, Apocalypse. boy. What <laughs> Apocalypse the Apocalypse now. <laughs> Motherfuckers Sorry. running barefoot through the jungle. <laughs> oh, me love you long time. <laughs> the Vietnamese hooker comes out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, you yeah, sexy boy. <laughs> you know the the final scene when they see the boats coming. <laughs> <laughs> She's the first one waving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me love, me love you long, long time. time. <laughs> what the oh. fuck? <laughs> Whoa, I think I like these people. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, you know, small fox came from Bangkok, oh, actually. Man, that's the funniest little slip, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what so, yeah, it? no. Full Metal Jacket or Apocalypse Now? <laughs> it's Full Metal Jacket. Okay, that's, yeah. That's Yeah, because it's Joker. He's in there, right? Yeah, that's how they open um, <laughs> to the Vietnamese War. Yeah, they finally get over there. Yeah, because there's that that one scene where they're kind of like, you know, they graduated, whatever. But then, I think right before that it is like Joker explaining the, I guess, like the peace sign on his helmet to one like. Oh, yeah. or something yeah. i think it's like a nice juxtaposition of how i feel shut the fuck up you're going to saigon <laughs> and it just opens on saigon and sexy little vietnamese bitch oh i love you cool, <laughs> man. war is hell war is hell uh yeah, so I'm going to Vietnam, dude, and I'm gonna have a fucking blast. Well, that sounds fun. Maybe we can visit. Yeah. Uh, don't say we. That is not the best in terms of who to bring. <laughs> but if you're talking about your boys, <laughs> then hell yeah, dude. Then y'all can come visit constantly. I think it'd be fun to visit Vietnam. It's just very jungle out there. Dude, the Ho Chi Minh City is like the size of New York. Right. <laughs> but I'm saying it's like you're going out in the countryside. It's fucking jungle. Ah, right. I think I just caught you in a racist, backward-ass fucking mentality, didn't I? You call me a hooker and you're racist and you're liberal and you like the fifth element character the Tucker Tucker, Tucker plays, dude. <laughs> I almost called him Tucker Carlson, and that would be a fucking funny role swap. Yeah, what the fuck is going on? What's up with these aliens? <laughs> that reminds me of the time that an electrician fucking shattered the realm of reality. And uh I, I told you the story a long time ago. I don't think I ever said it on the podcast where we were in a hospital and it was an old people hospital. And uh, the the electrician told me to wear a mask because there's old people. And I said, I'm good. I got the vaccine and I don't care. And then he goes, well, uh, my my president says that I don't need the vaccine. And I was like, who the fuck are you talking about? And he was like, <laughs> Mr. Trump. 
Mr. Trump says I don't need the vaccine, so you should wear a mask. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, this shit is all backwards and reversed. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Your president <laughs> is the one that came out with the vaccine. Yes, and pushed it super hard. But he also said that he doesn't need it because he's got lion blood or whatever. Hell and... yeah. Sounds like <laughs> Charlie Sheen, boy. So this guy's unvaccinated telling me to wear a mask in a hospital. <laughs> and I would I'm just vaccinated. wear a mask in a hospital Not because people are fucking gross. <laughs> like, it was wild. Is it for COVID? <laughs> no, it's because you're nasty. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Hospitals are just fucking pits of misery, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're gross. But... Dude, yeah. I I missed an opportunity to have sex with my nurse. I, okay, I didn't miss it. I just didn't take the opportunity because I had a fucking like two foot catheter in my dick, and yeah, that'll hold you back. Oh, it, it wasn't. But I was just <laughs> as I was gonna invite her into the shower, I was like, oh, oh, dude, I just immediately thought about that thing getting reinserted, and I was like, nah, I'm. I'm good. Have a good one. <laughs> Bye. Oh. But yeah, that's one of my like one of my fantasies, let me tell you. It's like <laughs> a, that was a huge nineties trope where it's like it's probably eighties as well. But like the action hero ends up in the hospital and then there's that one heart of gold nurse. So like, I'm gonna get you to walk again. Yeah, they even used it in Bulletproof, that Adam Sandler and Damon Wayans movie. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Where like Adam Sandler is somehow like an elite criminal, <laughs> he gets like Damon Wayans shot, and uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. right. And what literally, is that movie called? it's called Bulletproof. Oh yeah, bulletproof. Yeah, like I just <laughs> I said, like, motherfucker. I didn't hear you. Yeah, you did. You're uncultured, dude. You like liberal stuff, like vaccines and the Fifth Element. You can we talk about Barbie? Oh yeah, I forgot you little pussy ass deep fried bitch, dude. <laughs> oh man, are you gonna transition soon or what? You want to look like Barbie? Yeah. Or you want to look like Ken when you pull his pants down? No dick much. having. You want to donate your balls to your girlfriend, dude? I would just like a bulge, please. <laughs> just some sort of fleshy bulge. That's hot, dude. I no love holes. fleshy bulges. <laughs> That's what, like, after, like, pre, or not, not pre-op. That's what post-op women basically are. It's like no way yeah because it's like it obviously it's an inverted dick but like the the hole never seals or no let me rephrase that the hole is constantly sealing so you have to like walk around with this like plug in your new pussy and if you leave it out for too long it seals and gets all infected and then you can't pee anymore and you got to go and basically get the surgery again in order to pee. But yeah. Wow. It's all I've honestly never done my due diligence and like looked it up. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that shit in my search history. <laughs> but yeah, I just like it doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to do it. it. <laughs> To Not me, interested. it's on the same level as when you see like women with like double K size implants and those ass implants where it's just like obscene. Yeah, like, like, you're like, come someone on. Someone needed to hug you more and just like right. tell you that you're okay. Because I, I know personally, I know the nephew of the doctor that performed the first reassignment surgery and yeah you know so i i know a lot about it you'll never guess when it took place i remember you telling me this story it was 
a long time ago, right? Mm. Yeah, 19... Was it Korea? <laughs> no, no, 1927 no. in Nazi Germany at the Institute of Sexology in München, Munich. Oh, that's where my grandma's from. And 1929, it was burnt to the fucking ground in the night of... Or during Crystal Knock. The night of broken glass. Yeah. The glass was broken that night. Book burning, library By torch. Nazis. Then the... I guess it was Parliament. I'm not sure what the... Yeah, they just went on a rampage that night, didn't they? Well, that was their coup. So they busted... I guess I'll use Parliament because I don't know what the government building was called. But yeah, they... Busted in, and a Nazi was shot, and every good well shot and killed, and every good movement, you know, quote unquote good movement needs a martyr, and that was the push that switched the population into, like, look, they killed a Nazi member just for his beliefs. Like, well, where was he, motherfucker? Burning down Parliament? Like, all right. Maybe. They didn't, like, they left that part out. But, so, yeah, it became this huge thing, and the population was like, yeah, we love the fucking Nazis. Wait, what? What are y'all doing? Oh. Whoops. Like, no, we didn't <laughs> like the Nazis, dude. Hell no. Yeah. I don't think anybody really did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was actually against them the whole time. <laughs> That's what they say, man. That's what they say. Nah, dude, it makes a lot of sense. Like, you've got this fucking party that's like, hey, we're poor as fuck. Y'all want to be rich again? Yeah. Like, all right, follow <laughs> us. Okay. We took it in the ass. We took it in the ass hard. <laughs> Now we're going to do meth and fucking take over countries. <laughs> but that was also the thing where until Hitler started losing his mind, like because of it, it wasn't mainly meth. It was a concoction of syphilis. Well, probably wasn't syphilis either. Um, he had it. He had syphilis. It drove him mad. I don't think that's the case. Penicillin Maybe it actually wasn't invented. No, I don't think it was. I think penicillin was the 50s. Yeah, poor Hitler. Oh, all right now. <laughs> all right now. So sad. So sad. <laughs> but no, he, he had a way, and it was probably Goebbels, the, uh, you know, the mastermind of propaganda. Goebbels, but that dick. That's, that's how they... In, don't you say that, dude. You're a Nazi <laughs> sympathizer. I've caught you, dude. No, I'm not. But that's how oh, they that's invaded bad. Poland because they... Uh, I don't know if there's any validity to this. I really haven't Googled, hey, how much of the Nazi were good? Or like, how much Just of the Nazi plan it. was like actually okay? But that's how they invaded Poland because they claimed Poland had uh german pow's and they were torturing them I'm like we're gonna go yeah. get those motherfuckers back and the fucking the entire populace was like yeah absolutely let's go and it worked until it couldn't work anymore I'm like who are we invading now i don't know yeah. morocco like, why fucking french dude fuck the french yeah. All right, now we don't need to go to Africa. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. You disagree? We're gonna put you in a concentration camp. All right. I agree. Yeah. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. Wild time. That's, that's why Oppenheimer was so fucking good, man. And like, oh shows yeah, you you're, gonna, how... you're gonna switch from uh, I just saw Barbie to actually Oppenheimer, yeah. 
You don't want to talk about it, do you? So, of course, I want to. I talk brought it up. It. I want to talk about it, but I'd rather I said talk Barbie. About it. You're a fucking bitch, dude. I said Barbie, and you just go off on this Nazi rampage. Yeah, dude. Why fucking do you think? crazy, crazy? Why world. do you think? I'm so fucking tired of this bullshit in America. <laughs> I'm leaving the country, dude. Yeah. Y'all are weak. Pussified, commodified generation. Fuck you. We had it hard. We, we do have it hard. Men. Now what are we? A society that fucking... Actually, it's really interesting to look at what's going on. Um, so, like, racism, you know, and I'm I'm doing the little bunny finger things, you know, racism, where you're, right. or, you know, openly speaking funny and, like, making jokes and shit, and then using the term, one of the phobics or the ists, you're racist, you're homophobic, you're transphobic. What, mm -hmm. what all that is, we go, you know, let's, let's say 20 years. Oh, well, all right, 19 years, right? If you weren't supporting the war in Iraq, or I guess in this case, Afghanistan, um, you were anti-American. And then right. you go back and I guess to the 80s and it's like, oh, you're gay. You have AIDS. And then you go back and then it's, oh, you're a communist. You're part of the Red Party. And then mm -hmm. you go back, you're anti-Christian. Yeah. And it just, it keeps moving where it's like, hey, we found this really awesome blanket term that we can just ruin people's lives with how fun is that i don't like this at all like typically it's not coming from the left it's coming from the right and now the left is like they don't know how to do things properly in terms of like something that requires like masculine energy so they're like, because like if, let's say the Red Scare or before that, you know, you're not a Christian, you're like anti-American. I was like, they were almost synonymous with like early 50s to the Red Scare. Yeah. The right did it so fucking hard where they're like, no, we're deporting you. We're taking everything. Fuck you. We now own all your intellectual property. Fuck you. You're not even coming back to America. And the left is like, we're going to yell at you at, on Twitter and hopefully you lose your job. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. Like, if you had some bravado, you'd be able to accomplish a lot more. But you just filled your ranks with like 20 somethings and like emotionally charged, like 50 year old women. You know, like, Y'all suck, dude. <laughs> Y'all aren't even effective at this shit. But because, like, they infiltrated, like, academia and media and, like, higher-up jobs. Like, yeah, well, fuck you. You're never going to work as an actor again. Like, oh, boy. Is that really, like, the best y'all got, losers? Mm. And you're, yeah, you're it's, one it's... of the phobics. Like, man, y'all had... Hundreds of thousands of years, because this, not hundreds of, hundreds and thousands of years of history. Like, Galileo was murdered for being geocentric. And it's like, no, no, you're an atheist, kill him. Like, what the fuck? No, I'm just saying, like, kill the fucking atheist. And it's been like this forever. And you've got so much history to go on. And all they're basically doing is like calling you a name now. All right. Well, I guys. bet you there's some Christians out there that would kill an atheist. <laughs> Boy, you are like, I need to talk to your fucking girlfriend because you, you've basically become 
a liberal, dude. No, like, you're I'm feeling just attacked, arguing dude. against your shit. There is no argument it's going on rants and stuff, and I'm it's just not saying. an argument. This is a <laughs> fact. I'm talking about the historical precedent of having a like cancelable, just like oh, we found one word. Like back right. in the day, is like you yeah, censorship is not good. It's not going right. to work. But it's not like, and now the new terms are like racist, trans, and it's like. That means nothing. Like, yeah, I agree with you on that, but it's just both sides are fucking emotionally charged in different ways. And if right. you're not angry and upset, then they don't appeal to you. So My thing like, is, like, the right doesn't have enough power to do anything to, like, you know, can quote unquote cancel. They, I mean, historically, they just murdered people, right? Like. Or historically, you know, in America, they were just like, yeah, fuck you, dude. Like, you're yeah. going to lose everything. And we're going to, like, perform fun experiments on you. Or we're going to, like, bar you from anything but the lowest of society. And then it's just funny because, like, the left, even though they own everything from Amazon to Facebook to every news site every news corporation and they still like the most that they're doing is calling you a name and like oh man like, that's well, it's just like going to someone's face and being like fuck you is what they're trying to make it be it's a, a verbal assault which is not true it's just you not being able to handle your emotions and that guy's being an asshole, probably too. But you know, there's a lot of assholes in the world. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> weird. Not gonna it's, give a fuck, <laughs> like because for the most part, the people that they're like, you know, quote unquote, canceling is like just people talking, and it's like, yo, do you know how often you get it wrong just because you're just talking? Like, of course, we got shit takes, man. Like, and we learn and we grow. And yeah, in an ideal world, we'd accept everyone. But we don't live in an ideal world. Like, it's y'all are proof positive. The people you're yelling at is proof positive. So it's like, all right, how do we adjust? All right, well, we can't get rid of freedom of speech. Okay. So I guess you just let those people talk on both sides I'm like no we have feelings and we want them respected like, no sorry like, there's yeah. nothing there like well all right we're gonna fucking make a twitter post about you like boy okay <laughs> really okay like if this was like 80 years ago i'd be murdered for my ideas that's all you got Probably. yeah <laughs> 80 years ago was World uh, War II, bro. Like, yeah, not probably, for sure. These motherfuckers... I mean, people just need to... Uh, I don't know, if you are triggered by something, then fucking don't use it. Quit being a bitch and stand by your beliefs or whatever and fucking don't use Twitter. Don't use Instagram. Whatever the fuck it is that you have a problem with, like, don't use it and bam, you don't think about it and it's not a fucking part of your life and you move on, you find other things to do. It's, it's that simple. It's Everyone wants to change shit and it, that's not going to happen. It's, it's created. It's going to do what it does. The internet's bad. We all know that shit gets out of control, but everyone's just trying to fucking have it their way and this ain't fucking Burger King. <laughs> well dude i mean that's kind of what like i mean it took the right probably you know 50 years to figure that out where they're like wait we can boycott stuff too like yeah guys just yeah don't don't go to target yeah okay or what that's, else do they not like like starbucks starbucks bud light uh, yeah bud, bud light, light now <laughs> here's the thing 
<laughs> they're incredibly effective now where they're like, oh, what the left was doing, we could do. But to like great success because all of middle America is basically conservative because yeah, that's where all of our food is. I'm like, oh, it's, so if we stop I've... drinking Bud Light, you're telling me that they're about to go out of business? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy concept, I, I honestly, guys. man. Boycotts have been around for all church. of America. That's how America got founded. They're like, dude, we're going to fucking throw your tea into the harbor for that tax. We're going to boycott the British. And they're like, why didn't y'all learn from that? It's part of our history, guys. Like, oh, you mean to tell me there's other options besides Target? Yeah. And there's better beer besides Bud Light? Yeah. What the Most fuck? definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Almost every beer is better than Bud Light. I can, without a doubt, <laughs> say, mm, yeah, I agree with that statement. There's, I've tried almost every beer. I've enjoyed almost every beer above Bud Light. Yeah. Mil Miller is better. Coors is better. And, like, don't get me wrong. Like, anytime a party had Bud Light, it's, like, neat. We got a we got a splurger in the in the party. Somebody got the good stuff, but then yeah, you, know, you hit like nineteen, and you're like, I think I like Miller. Then you hit twenty one, you're like, I think I, I like think. anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take Natty Light. I'll take Milwaukee's best. Like, Oof, yeah, that's a rough one too. <laughs> I liked Milwaukee's best because it was like. Oh, I it's just water that gets me drunk. I mean, that's pretty neat. No taste. That one had a weedy it tasted like wheat to me. Like it was it was like watered wheat. Mmm. <laughs> like, and Bud Light strangely tasted like it had sugar in it to me. It was like a sweet well, fucking Bud Light weird. for me just that was the closest that you could get to where it when someone was saying piss water, that was like the closest taste. <laughs> like, oh, dude, yeah. why do you have to say that? Like, ew, now I taste yeah. pee. Especially out of a can. It's one hundred percent out of a can. Dude, do you remember? I guess it was twenty ten, maybe a little bit later. Uh, Bud Light Platinums. Oh yeah, we bought the shit out of it. <laughs> Fuck, dude! It gets you so fucked up, man. Instead of three point four percent alcohol, it's actually ten percent alcohol per bottle, Whoa. and they only come in super cool aluminum cans. Oh, aluminum yeah. cans! Like, what is this? It's an aluminum can that's shaped like a bottle. Just put it in a bottle, dude. What the fuck mm, yeah metal. And they started out with only six packs and then they finally came out with the case oh the worst like, dude. god yeah like, and then one day i was like this tastes like shit guys <laughs> yeah but <laughs> we were not. drinking birthday cake flavored vodka oh and yeah. on top of doing a lot of drugs so at the time, it was like, dude, this is the greatest fucking thing ever. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to wear gauges, do drugs, and drink birthday cake vodka <laughs> forever, dude. And I'm going to be with my boys. None of us are ever going to like have any conflict. We can keep this up forever. And then literally one day, we missed like a drug dosage. We're like, what the, f what the fuck? Where am I? It's, wait, it's 2012. What happened? It's been like three years. What happened? Like, I don't know if I want to do drugs anymore, guys. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah, let's all leave. Yeah. Like, okay. I'll never forget the moment too. <laughs> it's like what fucking moment was it? Was it the is, 18th time you pulled your brain out of your nose? Or was it when you looked around and we were infested with flies and trash bags? Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a, a one defining moment where I had woken up from
from a a binger of a sleep in the fucking afternoon. It was, I don't know, three or four o'clock p.m. And fucking everyone's passed out in their various little sleep spots. And I was on the couch in the living room. It's all blacked out in there. And uh, midnight, the cat was just fucking across the room, just looking at me with shame, shame in his eyes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, felt like shit. Probably pulled some shit out of my nose and looked at all the flies and gnats and a fucking tower of pups and Literally trash bags. Reaching the <laughs> And I just wanted some nice drinking water, and the sink's just fucked. <laughs> yeah. No, no clean cups. No clean dishes. And I was like, "This is fucking awful." <laughs> Maybe I and, uh, yeah. We thank my life choices. Straight See, up. That... For me, there was never like light at the end of the tunnel, so I was just like, "I want to keep doing this till I'm dead." And I was hoping, like, every day that I was like, please just overdose. Like, for the love of God, please just overdose and get this yeah. miserable life over. Like, I'm We were all like that, high. though. Oh, for sure. It, but I, I it think... It was like that mindset. We were all party, party, and, like, death from overdose was just, like, a part of it. Yeah, dude. You know, we it's died like war. Young, dude. <laughs> Live fast, die young. Young and the reckless. We're going to watch... Fantasy Factory on repeat, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good way to live, but you know, not everyone made it out either, which is the shitty part. Well, I mean, okay, let's be real. Um, you know, I've lost a lot of friends to drugs. You have as well. Um, but... I think a lot of those people weren't going to like have greener pastures on the other side, uh, regardless of if they survived or not, because true, the people that did make it true. out on the other side are like serving like ten to twenty for yeah felony drug charges, right? So it's like yeah, maybe they did have something, and if like if you were to tell me like what's in store for my life after all that i was like all right i'm overdosing now like 100 <laughs> like, percent. jesus i mean i honestly because it's like you're gonna get the shit rocked by your wife like i don't like that then you're gonna like struggle to eat every single month like oh man I'm like yeah and you're gonna like be on the edge of eviction Every month, like yeah, okay. Like, do I find a job? Nope. You're gonna get denied from a zipline company that's doing like special camp ziplines for kids. All right, all right. And this is like literally all within the week. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe they need you to fucking catch kids flying down that. They didn't know line. I was. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's like so, the thing. Like I, like ah, I've got. You need something chill. Two degrees. <laughs> I'm got army experience. Yeah, did I? Okay, guys. You sound like a pedophile. Like, whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> Fellas, I, I didn't know the age gap here. I I thought I was a summer That's... camp for adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just want to see a bunch of kids on zip lines, you sick fuck. No, I just want to go on the zip line. And if I can get an employee discount, dude, I'm going to use it. <laughs> and then I'll get confronted. <laughs> I think you're just here for the zip line. What? <laughs> No, keeps yanking on it like it's his. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I got denied a janitor job last week, so it's like, man, I'm uh, yeah, I'm uh, at a nice big low, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, and that's that a new not, one. That's not good. 
that's a new low, my dude. <laughs> well, that's a physical job as well, man. Like there's they a didn't lot of know. They don't know I'm disabled from my application. Yeah. Hmm. Ew. I don't know what they're looking for. Touchable. Gross. Come on. I'm pretty cool. Like instead of a cane, I'll use a mop. That's that works, right, guys? No. Yeah. We want well, you know it came in the mail today that pissed me off. A flashlight, dude. That's awesome. No, why would I be upset with that? I don't know. Because it's a the one that it has like a penis on the other end. Oh, so you yeah. Like fuck the balls. And then yeah, that would be upsetting. But <laughs> I go to my girlfriend. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I just wanted a bigger penis. You fuck the toy, and the toy fucks me. Okay. Just throw it at her. <laughs> Jiggles off her face. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> what Picturing came in the, a, a dildo flying through the air. What came in the mail? Buddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a card from a weed company. It's like an online thing. And it's like, buy uh, whatever weed, real THC, delivered to your door. And it's got all the pictures of delicious beautiful thc bud and uh yeah i'm sure it's all like delta fucking 10 bullshit <laughs> it just made me mad and i was like how dare you fuckers you know it's illegal here quit, quit rubbing it in my fucking face <laughs> well no dude i think it's along the lines of uh what was that shit called spice right where yeah, where it was legal, but kind of illegal. No, no, no. There, it, what basically was happening was they would make certain compounds illegal. And so the scientists were just like, all right, we'll just switch up the compounds. That, those aren't illegal. And yeah. so those would hit the market, and then like, now those are illegal. Like, all right, we'll just switch it to a different compound. That's yeah, what that's, I th that's what's happening, for sure. I think you're getting... Was that company called like Mood or something? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. It was one I've never seen before. Exactly, because I I've been getting YouTube ads for those, and it's yeah. like this big old thing of bud. You know what? Yes, yes, yeah. it was Mood actually. Yep, I told you. <laughs> so that's what I yes. think is happening. They're like, oh, we'll just take out the compounds that are illegal, and uh, yeah, it's like the know. percentage of a yeah. certain THC because it. We have the Delta 10s, we have Delta 8, and something else. There's like all these real specific compounds, but you know, it's just like different levels of high. Like it, this, this shit only gets you like buzzed, you know, it's like takes the edge off, but it doesn't get you baked. Yeah, it's like you those motherfuckers that are like, dude, I feel great on CBD. Like I'm getting yeah. fucked up. Like, no, you're not. You right. <laughs> you're just wasting money. Yeah. So I do think mood is legal in all 50 states, but I don't think it's going to mm. be legal for very long in all 50 states. Um, yeah, it's just, it's weird, you know? Because I was, I oh, fuck, what was it called? Diet Smoke uh, was this one gummy company. And they used to sponsor like a bunch of like, really raunchy podcasts and yeah so i just kept getting inundated and i was like sick dude i'm gonna order like 200 gummies and the day they showed up was day three of my first interaction with covid and oh, wow. I, I couldn't move i was throwing up blood and i like walked to the door and I was like, here's 200 gummies. And I go, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. But in reality, I was so fucked up from COVID that I would wake up, grab one, and dump gummies in my mouth and just go back to sleep. Then I would wake up just awful, dump more gummies in my mouth and go to sleep. Yeah. 
And I did 200 <laughs> in about a week. Probably oh less than a week, dude, but it was awesome. What was your shit like? Um, I don't know. Is it gummy? <laughs> yeah, it just came out like a nerd's rope. <laughs> <laughs> With little bits of peanuts and stuff. In yeah, there. <laughs> whatever food I had, you know, two weeks ago. Just stuck to oh that, my God. that taffy. I have a fun work story. I had a fun week at work. <clears throat> Define fun. Uh, physical in the trench, dirty. You fucked nasty. up a pipe, dude. You're a loser, plumber. No, I didn't. I... Oh yeah, oh yeah. I... What happened? You forgot somebody to else. It. Somebody else fucked the pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you referencing the cap testing scenario? That oh, I was about? oh, did I just Mold expose? Bitch. The penguin plumber for his lack of attention to detail, dude. <laughs> you would have never made yeah. it in the military, dude. I was given faulty equipment, and that's what happened. It faulted, and I didn't notice. But uh, anyways, no, I gave a fucking jackhammer to this kid, 19-year-old. And, uh, you know, he's a hard worker, but not too much going on up top. <laughs> and uh, so I give it to him and I was digging by myself, like waiting for everyone to come back and help me. And it, nobody was coming back. I was like, what the fuck's going on? And uh, all of a sudden this kid comes running back with the jackhammer and puts it in the trench with me. And he's like, this was never over there. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> he's like, this was never over there. Okay. And I was like, all right what'd you do <laughs> and he like just turns around runs away <laughs> I was like, shit that's not good and so i get out of the trench and go over there to see what's going on and you know my boss and everybody else is in the trench fucking digging around these pipes this kid jackhammered and broke two fucking pipes in one swoop of course fucking one was a, a live, like, sewer waste line. Oh, jeez. And that one was, like, old cast iron. So it just, like, fucking shattered. Um, and that was just oozing out lovely sewage. And uh, the other one was a 10-inch pipe, even bigger. Uh, and it was lower. And he just fucking, like, jackhammered the top of it. And the only reason he stopped hammering was because it got stuck in the fucking top of the pipe and he like looks at it and he's like oh that's a pipe <laughs> like oh that's a big pipe <laughs> wait a minute and he looks over to his left and he's like oh shit that's water he's like what the fuck dude and so yeah this fucking guy <laughs> destroyed two pipes thinking he was jackhammering like rocks and shit that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah, it sounds fun if y'all didn't have to deal with it. Like, oh yeah, yeah, it was gross, and so that your poop uh, reference just reminded me of it because there was like little bits of corn and <laughs> oh, shit great. in the water. <laughs> it was so nasty, dude. That's awesome. It smelled great, but oh, I'm sure. Was that your yeah. first like stereotypical plumber job? Or it's like dealing with shit. Uh, I mean, I've done tie-ins and shit, but like that was my first experience with someone who broke a line like that. That was live. I and, mean, uh, your yeah. stereotypical plumber is like, "Hey, come unclog my toilet from my giant shit." Yeah, and that's a service plumber. There's there's lots of different types of plumbers, which I didn't know before I got into it. Yeah, because you're um, yeah. A commercial, right? Yeah, I'm a new construction commercial plumber. Right, so you're never dealing with shit, right? Hardly, unless we're like Open? remodeling something, which is this scenario where we're remodeling a hotel. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I rarely usually I'm in a new building, so there is no I, poop. You get to be like, that first. Christened poop. In yeah, dog. I put that, that new shit in. That new poo, bro. 
yeah so it's nice as far as you know plumbing goes it's the more uh clean job <laughs> yeah because i mean i guess what a lot of people don't realize is like there's two parts of plumbing there's the entry which is you know just water and then there's the exit which is the poo poo and so like yeah most plumbers are either fucking with your faucet or unclogging toilets one of the well, two it's, it's even a lot more than that it's like pretty much anything that has to do with pipes so you can do gas you can do you know uh got copper cast iron uh, pvc cpvc pex you know all these different fucking uh, stainless steel all these different types of pipes for different applications and shit so it's a lot it's, it's way bigger than i thought i was like damn i didn't know plumbers did all this shit <laughs> that's like so so i used to work with a guy that used to live with us big rotund fella big big fatty who loved cars and yeah was, no his dad right yeah and yeah i remember the way it was pitched i was tried like, working for him too and I was like yo was you can be a carpenter you can remodel i was like sick and every time they call me i was like yeah we gotta unclog a toilet it's leaking poop into a bathtub go, what the fuck like you didn't <laughs> have this at the job description at all yeah yeah well deal with it okay i guess okay awesome yeah yeah i was gonna work for that guy too he's like i need help working on uh jeff bezos's house out in el paso we be doing a lot of cabinet work out there and i was like oh well i have a lot of cabinet experience he's like oh yeah okay well, give, give me a call and i do and he's like nah we don't have room we're actually going to be expanding in a year i'll give you a call then it's been like two or three years <laughs> okay like thanks man i honestly think he saw like some of my posts back in the day or like heard caught wind of some of my political standings and uh was like nah fuck that guy <laughs> yeah but i mean fuck that entire family, dude. Fuck yeah them weirdos they're still outraged and ranting of course <laughs> And that's what happens when you raise a bastard child. Like, you become a weirdo. Like, such yeah. a bizarre fucking turn of events that, like, a ton of our friends ended up raising someone else's child from, like, almost birth. Like, what the fuck? Why y'all doing this? Like, we're boys, that right? That's the thing, man. Yeah, but this is the first time I've ever gotten pussy. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? No, it's not. Yeah, but dude, this is good. No, it's not. It's not good pussy, bro. Yeah, but I love her. All right, well. I can't argue with that, but dude, you're like, you guys suck. What the fuck? Don't raise someone else's child the end you're gonna become a fucking weirdo if you do that that's a shout out to every single person out there in the audience don't <laughs> raise someone else's child dun, dun, dun. you really want to wipe up that fucking mess that someone else made and then realized like oh i would rather pay child support than have to fucking deal with this bitch and you come in and you're like actually she's a victim no she's not She's like probably awful, and now the yeah. dad ran. It's tough, man. Like I, I've been exposed to a lot of divorcees recently, and like you, you, you end up seeing like, huh? Maybe this person does have some flaws. <laughs> that would be pretty fucking annoying. <laughs> well, dude, my favorite <laughs> phrase about it is like, yo no matter how hot she is and how perfect you think she is and for the women out there and, and my gay bros no matter how hot he is and how 
perfect you think he is, there's a line of people that are all sick of their shit. And you're <laughs> the next person in line. And you either join them later or you fall into the trap where you're just fucking miserable. Yeah. And you're like, no, I love her. I'm going to do everything I can for this girl. Shut the fuck up. I'm going to go to Vietnam and fuck hookers. What are y'all going to do? I don't know. Get like a good deal at Costco on Capri Suns. Cool. That sounds awful. I'm going to become an expat. Over and not. <laughs> Shit's going to be dope, dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I cannot wait, bro. I'm like so excited. All right, that's going to be cool. Hell yeah, dude. And then when I show you around, when you come and visit alone and by yourself and with no one else, hint, 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 hint. Oh, um, wow. It's going to be even cooler. Because then we can finally have sex in the same room together, dude. Yeah. That's not what I want. Yeah, dude. <laughs> in a karaoke bar. Yeah, dude. No, nope, don't want that either. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? You never passed around a hooker with you and your boys? No, not even once. What? That's crazy, dude. Sorry. Not cool. <laughs> you know, you're not who I thought you were, man. I thought you were my boy. I am, but minus what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did it in Korea where me and my friend were drunk and we're like, yo, let's go have sex with hookers. And, like, huh? and to me, that's like the equivalent of saying, like, let's go buy action figures and comic books. I'm like, oh, really? You mean it? And so we wandered yeah. to this brothel. And there was only one lady working. And I'm like, yeah, I'm down. And my friend's like, yeah, of course I'm down. I'm like, yay. <laughs> so I have sex with her first. And halfway through, she fucking, dude, the most badass move you could possibly imagine. She's, I don't know what reverse and like, you know, cowgirl and reverse cowgirl. I don't know. Yes. I don't know which one is reverse. Is that where she's not looking at you? Or is that where she yeah. is looking at you? Yeah, looking away, not looking at you. That's reverse cowgirl? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because your head is the head of the horse. Right. But I mean, essentially, I'd be upside down on all fours if it was really like a cowgirl. But yeah, okay, I get it. Well, we're not going to get into I'm the not, I'm not going to get fucked in the butt. Let's just be real. Especially <laughs> by a woman. Sure. Sure. Uh, no, let me tell you. In Korea, dude, they'll fuck you in the butt whether you like it or not. They'll yeah, shove those... three fingers in. And like, you like that? Like, I don't know, but I can't say no now. You're already <laughs> like wrist deep, dude. But all right. So she was cowgirl. And... She puts her hands like back, like onto my thighs. And maybe I was just really drunk, probably, but she managed to get my dick out on the like exit thrust and use both of her hands covered in lube, like a tight fucking grip, like, um, you know the grease dance at the end of the movie where they're like banging their fists on their hands and then they shove a thumbs out to the right, then a thumbs out to the left? So imagine... No. Okay, fuck you. You've never <laughs> seen the classic grease? It's been a long time, dude. You're I don't know what the fuck, fuck you're talking bitch. about. Okay. <laughs> take one fist and then take another fist. and then Which number is this? Is this grease lightning? No, absolutely <laughs> not. It's the end song where they're all dancing. Um, 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 um,
and then stack your other fist on top of it. Okay. Okay. So on my exit thrust, she pulled my dick out and slipped her two fists like that over my dick, but kept riding me. Thanking, like, getting me to think that I was still fucking her. It was awesome. Like, the coolest, wow. most G move you could possibly do, where she's like, dude, it's late. My pussy is tired. I'm not used to American cock. Like, please. Like, I can't take this. And just zoop. And so I was fucking her hands, and it wasn't you until I went. It wasn't <laughs> until I went to grab her ass, and I was like, "What the, what the fuck is this?" And I just look at her, and go, "Hey, go, oh, so, sorry," <laughs> and then put it back in. But that's funny. <laughs> but then I finish, so she goes and fucks my friend, and we leave. And we're both like super excited to tell each other about that move. We're like, dude, halfway through, did like she do? And we're like, I'm like, yeah, and like both fists. And I'm like, I didn't even know it felt like a vagina. And we're like, whoa, that's awesome, dude. Like, we were so impressed with her skills. Like, yeah, this is the coolest thing you could possibly do. Like, they call her coochie hands. Hey, coochie hands, can I fuck your hands? <laughs> 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 it was great man so i can't wait to have that experience with you dude yeah that's not gonna happen <laughs> oh it absolutely <laughs> is gonna happen gonna oh my god dump some alcohol into your your boba tea get you fucking a little loosey goosey and they're like yo let's go sing karaoke and your dumb ass is gonna be like oh karaoke cool not realizing that they have about 20 women that you get to pick from. Like, who would you like to keep company in the karaoke bar? Like, yeah. four, five of you, ten of you. And then the second they get there, they're like, let's make out. I'm like, what? Yeah. And they make you feel all fun. Like, ooh, are we doing something wrong? Like, ooh. If your boss walks in, will like we get in trouble? I'm like, ooh. Until eventually they're like, Blowing ping pong balls out of their pussy. I'm like, oh, this is part of the routine. Cool. All I'm saying, dude, right. it's going to be a fun life. It's going to be a fun life. Especially when that shit only costs like $10. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be balling out, dude. I'm going to have like 10 bitches playing ping pong against each other every night. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, man. I'm so excited. I think it would be pretty sick to go check out some like uh, war sites out there too. Oh, one hundred percent. Because my friend, like his wife, is you know native Vietnamese, so yeah, my friend's ex army as well. So that right. was like the first thing he did was like go to the Nam Museum, like the war memorial and have like nom vets explain exactly what like how they were doing it yeah and fuck dude it was awesome like the shit he was telling me about how fucking insane these motherfuckers were oh yeah and there's a lot of mystery to that war too it's it's just one of those things we don't like to talk about oh no like it's oh, really yeah. It's really straightforward if you will actually want to know. Uh, Definitely, you know. There's like, there's no mystery at all. It was we fucked up really badly. Uh, so it was in French control during World War II. Yeah, they were uh, getting fucked up. Yeah, by the Nazis. No, I mean like the Vietnamese were. Yeah, against them. the French. Yeah. And yeah, then but after World War II, it went into American hands. Uh, and the entire time, dude, Vietnam loved America. We were supplying them weapons, money, like, because this was, you know, our fight against communism. We didn't want it to take over. Yep. Population contest. 
in like 55 france was like yeah we want it back and we're like no like well we're gonna take it back and what uh and because we're nato allies at that point we have to join france's side i mean i guess we didn't have to but then we'd be fighting france and that would so, be not good that's basically the spur of the Vietnam War. We were like, yo, you're my boy, dude. We're best fucking friends. Wait, my other boy says he doesn't like you, dude. Now I have to have a problem with you. You're not yeah, allowed to okay. hang out with us anymore. Like, what? Like, yeah, my mom. Who likes, uh, who likes colonialism? We do. But I speak me. <laughs> And so then we supported a like you know pro you know, quote unquote pro democracy I guess revolution not really a revolution but a pro democracy government that was pro America as well and it turned out those motherfuckers were not that fucking cool uh, that's that famous photo of that one nom like general executing that dude on the street yeah you've seen that right like oh yeah where he's just like right yeah, behind him point that's point. uh that's Execution the leader style. of the pro-american side and that was when that was really when it came out like oh man we're supporting some some of the wrong dudes and so you know 20 years later like all right i guess we'll leave sorry sorry everybody we'll leave <laughs> so we left and yeah they're pretty like they're real cool with america now so it's still like communist regime but a very yeah. different type of communism than it's like the communism that massively starved like millions of people in china that type of communism not yeah 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 uh, american college communism yeah i guess the biggest lesson out of that war is don't underestimate somebody fighting for home right i mean that's why i mean you even see it with the the current war going on now where yep you at the beginning you use your advanced shit and then the uh the good old heads of state are like man that's fucking expensive let's just throw bodies at it and it goes back to you know world war one warfare trench warfare old munitions and it's like that type of war never changes so all you've got to do is survive the first strike and you're basically the thorn in a lion's paw and you, you've crippled it there's nothing and it's it repeats itself everywhere ukraine is the thorn fucking the taliban al-qaeda you know all of afghanistan they're the thorn all you got to do is keep poking and the lion can't run the lion can't progress nam great example of just like fuck it dude we're gonna use poop on sticks and y'all are gonna get fucked up dude yeah dude <laughs> it works yeah it's cool, brutal man. stories man but it's, yeah. it's really motivating because it's like this is why we have the second amendment like because they know that after all their advanced bullshit is tapped out we're gonna still have guns and they're like yeah we can't fuck with that and so that's why we don't have this like incredibly like militarized regime that's going to be like against America. That's why it's like it's a the only way they can attack you now is like through reputation. Right. And that only goes so far. Yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is like, hey, I don't want to <laughs> use Twitter anymore. I'm like, hey, now I feel great. Cool. Oh, man, it's wonderful. It's so awesome. I, you know, fortunately, I've never once used Twitter. I think I did 
maybe as a school project like you had to you know quote unquote network yeah so had to create all this shit like i created a podcast i created a fucking twitter and i was like hey we're going live on my podcast and i'm just like shooting tweets out into a fucking empty void that no one's responding to no one's even reading it okay fuck yeah <laughs> cool yeah it's weird man because i joined one time and it was very short-lived because i got hit up by people trying to sell shit all the time it would be books or just fucking merch and like this is annoying <laughs> I don't yeah, like it, dude. So. I because I had to like. I think I created a Facebook when I was living in Korea, maybe, or maybe right before that when I could keep in contact with my army friends. Yeah, and I got reached out by people that I ran cross country with, and I'm like, "Yo, you didn't like me, and it was mutual. I didn't like you. Why are you talking to me?" Like, well, I've got this great opportunity. Uh, and as a media block, like, don't finish your sentence. Like, I I know what you're going to say. It's some yeah. fucking scheme. It's some multi-level marketing. It's some pyramid scheme. And I'm not about it, you loser. Yep. Uh, it was just so weird. It's like, why the fuck did you approach me of all people? Like, y'all fucking hated me. I hated y'all. And now, like, the tides have turned somehow, and you think I'm going to be a customer of yours? No. Go do something with your life, weirdo. Don't join a pyramid scheme. It's pretty obvious. If you've got to pay for your job, it's a scam. That's not a good job, man. Or if your, like, job is dependent on how many people you have, like, serving under you, it, it's a scam, dude. Like, watch out. Yeah, good luck to you. <laughs> so, we were talking about our drug days. And you remember, like, most of that is on film, by the way. Locked under password, key, fire safe. Like, I'm not letting anybody see that shit. But I still have all the videos. Um, good. So I was thinking, you you remember how we couldn't go basically anywhere without a group of drunk women always saying, our life should be a TV show. Oh my God, if we had a reality show, and I was... Yes, I do recall. Yeah, and it happened constantly. And so I was thinking... Does that exist now? Because we are that generation of reality shows. Because obviously it came out with the real world in the early 90s. But right. it didn't really take off until 2008. Because of really relevant. It's going on right now. Because of social media. No. Uh the writer's strike. Oh. Hmm. They couldn't have, you know, scripted television, so all these television channels switched to reality. They're like, fuck you guys. <laughs> we don't need you. We got other shit that makes way more money. And yeah, that makes sense, actually. So but... that took hold 2008, and it was really, like... I guess to extend to your little brother and extend to my older brother, right? It was our kind of generations of that. But now I don't even know if people like, as especially like teens or like young adults, I don't think that's a thing for them because I think they want to become, you know, quote unquote influencers more so than anything. So, I isn't just, that reality TV though? 
No, of your course not. TikToks and stuff, and even no, no this no, no, podcast. No, no not at all. I, <laughs> I'm saying there's there's not a group of drunk women saying our lives should be a TV show. Oh my god, we're so funny. Like I think it's a lot more inward, where they're like, instead of you know our lives should be a TV show. I think their first thought is, oh, I should have recorded that. Or, ooh, this would look good on my Instagram. Versus, yeah. you know, we should all be famous. Or, And obviously that was coming from the same like pit of selfishness where it's like, I'm going to be the star of the reality show. Not y'all, but I'm glad y'all are here with me. I, and I, I just don't know if wanting your life to be a tv show is even a thing anymore does that make sense like that was just yeah because a weird time capsule that like flashed in my head was like wait a minute i haven't heard that shit i mean obviously i'm not on the bar scene i'm not in the clubs but i was like i don't know if that even exists that desire to have a reality show most people probably feel like they're not interesting enough and that's probably true but that's where the the producers and people be like no we'll make the show because all that shit's fake anyways they set you up and plant shit and stir the, the hornet's nest and fucking cause drama because it makes the show better so well, if you're you watching like it's if you fake. really want to know the <laughs> ins and out of that, uh, so there's there's basically two ways that producers do this. And I knew one of the producers for Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Um, so there's two ways that reality shows does that, where you sign a contract, and in the contract it says, we have the right to misrepresent you in any way possible and people are so starved for fame they're like yeah fuck yeah i don't care make me the bad guy that's fine not realizing right. that most people aren't going to understand that it's not fake. a single bit of this <laughs> is reality but the second way they do it is they and I, I'm not kidding. They drown you in alcohol. And so they don't take people that don't drink. And even if you don't see any alcohol in the show, you you have to... They, Your application will get denied. Your interview, your fucking audition will go into a reject stack for all the shows because you're not a drinker. I'm like, oh, well that's going to be real hard to ma manipulate this person. And so they just don't want you. And so like shit with like the Jersey shore, it's very obvious. Like, and with the real world and all that, it was like real obvious. Like, yeah, they're all fucking drunk. But what you don't see is like during the daytime when they're like having fights and throwing beds off shit, like balconies, like they've been drinking for like eight hours already and it's like noon so that yeah. that's the way that they do it they get you fucking hammered and then they also have the clause in the contract like yeah we can fucking misrepresent the shit out of you and you signed it so sorry that's all right so you can be come like enemy number one and you know the public eye because like you're a cheater you're a wife beater like what the fuck <laughs> i was just like having a good time like i just saw it you can't deny it i saw it on television yep i'm just here for the zip line y'all i'm just here for the zip line bro you know how excited <laughs> i was to get the zip line job dude i was like they don't <laughs> know what i got coming i'm only here for the zip line yeah like, Nah, we're well, on to you, bro. Like, oh, fuck. fuck you. I drank a bunch of coffee to get ready for this podcast, and now I have to shit. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you want to end the podcast or you want to come back? Nah, it's been a good hour and a half, right? 
Let's see. Why don't you just answer the fucking question instead of looking for a timestamp, dude? I was just checking to see our time. But yeah, I think I'm good. Um, what does that... We should do uh, game one. Yeah, absolutely. Either tomorrow or in the near future. That's good. Let's do it tomorrow for sure. Because cool. we, we haven't been uploading on the Patreon at all. Uh, like is, You can put game stuff on there? Or, I thought no, the Patreon was just podcast. It was, but I was just letting you know. Like, Let's hey, see. we haven't done anything for the Patreon in a long time. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were doing doubles. Yep, we were. Oh, that's right. Yes, we were. Okay. Oh, dude, before you go... uh so when did we we talked for almost an hour yesterday right just bullshitting yeah on my way home yeah through austin traffic and uh so you got off we got off the phone and i was like all right i'm finally gonna go to bed it's like almost four or it's like three something I'm like yeah fuck yeah so i put my head down and immediately my friend calls and I go, oh, what the, what the fuck? So I, I take my hat off and I just put it over the phone. I'm this delirious. I don't know how to silence it. I don't know how to like flip over my phone so the light's not being shown. Like, God oh, damn. I put my hat over my phone. I go to sleep. At this point, it's 4 p.m. Immediately wake up at 5 p.m. I go, oh, no. No, because that means I'm going to be up. Like, there's just no. I I know my shitty body. And so I call my friend back. And he's like, yeah, come over tomorrow. I'm like, okay. I don't get to sleep till five this morning. That's after a over 28 hour not sleeping session. I sleep for one hour. And it's like, hey, you're awake again. No, dude, fucking help me. Fucking help. Jesus. Well, I don't know. You need some sort of sleeping aid, whether that be weed or some some medicine that you get. I don't know. Yeah, no, they've prescribed me a, every pill on the planet. And, like, none of them work. And I was telling that to my mom and she's like yeah dude you, you've had this problem since you were a baby we used to give you benadryl uh -huh. and you would wake up like instead of going to sleep you get hyper as fuck like what like yeah none of that shit has ever worked on you oh dang it that's weird <laughs> yeah it's like it had everything had the opposite effect like you drink monsters at two in the morning and you go to sleep you're a fucking like polar opposite body. Okay. Yeah. Well, you then just do uppers. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. You got any cocaine? <laughs> Anybody? No. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, dang. Sorry. But it's like, dude, I eat I know I'm a penguin, fast but... food and I'm skinny as fuck. Like, so I'm just going to do the opposite of everything. All right. Eat healthy and start gaining weight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Okay, I'm about to shit myself. So. I know. I, I wanted to see how long I could drag it out <laughs> before you. A you're prairie a, dog. You're dude. a polite guy. I figured All right, you weren't going to say I'm out. shit. Hey, no. Wait. No, I've got more stories, dude. What about the hookers of Vietnam, dude? Oh. I'm going to shit all over them. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I'll catch you tomorrow. All right. Peace. Peace.